Welcome to High Ground, my name is Tanner, and today I'm going to be doing a recap of the various regional leagues, except for APEC. We're going to talk about LATAM, we're going to talk about EU, and then we'll talk about NA, uh, mostly focusing on NA, but uh, you know we will go over these other two regions a little bit. So, Playdays 3 and 4 are the most recent ones that, well, that we're going to talk about. Playday 5 uh, technically has concluded, and 6 is ongoing, but we'll talk about that next week. I record these on the weekends, and, and they have games going on on the weekends. So, last weekend, yeah. Uh, definitely a surprising day number three. I'd say all of these were upsets, except for Liquid taking down Tropic House. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe Team 1 or Furia, not a massive upset, but the first three, uh, I'd say uh, definitely upsets. Yeah, MIBR taking down W7M, so definitely a weak start for the uh, sort of the kings of Brazil, at least within the the regular season, the best of ones, uh, W7M, but uh, as you see over here, they do bounce back, taking down Liquid. A yeah, big win for MIBR, keeps them keeps them quite competitive. And they uh, you know, they lost this game, and they won this game. So only five points out of nine possible in the first three days, but that's not, that's not too terrible. And then Double O Nation taking down Ninjas in Pajamas. I'd say another pretty surprising one. We went to Skyscraper, and I think a lot of times when we go to Skyscraper, some teams are just more prepared than others. Uh, even though it's been in the map pool for a little while now, I think it's definitely one of the more neglected maps. So there's always the potential for a little bit of a shock when we do go to Skyscraper. But uh, this is becoming less of a factor as it as it remains in the in the map pool longer and longer. Black Dragons taking down FaZe. So Black Dragons were pretty good last stage. They did manage to choke away their top four placement and FaZe barely made it into the top four. But you'd also say probably FaZe is maybe like the best team in the world overall. If you go back for the like last year or so, they got uh, runners up at in, in Berlin and they were the winner of the Sweden major. So uh, they're pretty good when they go to Europe, I guess. But yeah, I mean, they've, they've gone to a few events and they've made it to the grand final of two of them. And I mean, Black Dragons taking them down. It is a best of one. And well, Black Dragons just looked quite good on Oregon and Black Dragons look quite good thus far being on the, the full nine points through the first three play days. And yeah, team one take down Furia in round 15. And <laughs> Furia lost in round 15 all three times. These guys have three points and they've played 45 rounds. That's insane. They just keep managing to lose in round 15. That's actually quite funny. They do block the trend over here. And then Liquid taking out Tropical 7-2. Not a big surprise. Uh, MIBR defeating Black Dragons 7-3. So back-to-back 7-3s for MIBR look quite good. And Black Dragons, well, they take their first loss. Their first loss of points, even. And FaZe bouncing back from a 3-7 loss to get a 7-3 victory over Team 1. Uh, nice little bounce back for them. They had... Uh, victories back to back in the first week dropping a point to w7m but still uh that puts them on what like eight points out of the possible 12 so pretty good and uh, w7m with a bounce back as well taking down liquid who were very dominant over tropic house but uh, you know the bounce backs continue and furia yeah finally they don't go to overtime and they they just straight up get the win so only six out of 12 points isn't amazing but it's not it's not i guess the worst case scenario tropic house uh, they in fact lose in round 15 so a point on the board for them there but not fantastic and it looks like yeah that was their <laughs> that's their first point one in 12 uh, i can't imagine those guys will be going to the major or even the Copa Elite Six, but uh, you know, one can hope, one can dream. All right, that's uh, it for that's it for Latam. Let's go take a look at EU. All right, so EU has only played three games per team, I suppose. So yeah, only three play days down, much slower pace than other regions. So heroic down, take down TT9 in the very first game. So I mean, TT9, they they keep getting pretty close. Five rounds here, four rounds here, five rounds here, but they've not able to get a single point on the board. Uh, but this was probably expected. And Heroic actually is the top of the board at the end of this day. I think they have eight of the nine points. They've yet to take a loss. BDS take down Outsiders. A little bit of a comeback. I think Outsiders were up like 4-1. And then BDS obviously win it 8-6. They did go overtime. And nobody doing especially well on Outsiders except for, except for Dan who went like 16-9. and nine. I think top frag for the whole lobby. And at the end of this, I believe the fourth, fifth, and sixth highest rated players were all from, are all from BDS. Which is quite impressive. You have uh, Lycofac... Bride and Shiko, I think in that order. Okay, Eminem take down take down Rogue, and I think they beat they beat them in both of the other stages as well. So Eminem 3-0 over Rogue, and it was a quite quite a close one here, all 15 rounds. But Eminem do take it down, and G2 take down Wolves. I think a little bit of a surprise. G2 hadn't looked uh, especially good thus far. They got one point against Secret, but I mean you probably don't want to be losing to Secret, and they lost to Heroic, and I mean Heroic do look quite good at the moment, so good to take a win over Wolves, who were the best team last stage. 
And then finally, Secret take down Navi. So back-to-back -back round 15 wins for Secret. They did drop a couple of points, but I mean, they were both wins. So four out of the nine possible points for them. Not spectacular, but it is uh, it is a start that they can build upon potentially. And yeah, I mean, again, there's only, uh, only the one play to talk about here per week. I guess we can look at the standings because I, the reason I didn't look at the standing for Latam is because they are uh, updating, uh, you know, currently because there's games going on. So yeah, as I said, Heroic on top with eight points, followed closely by BDS on seven. And and then we have Eminem and Rogue in, in third and fourth place with five points. And then we have five teams tied on four points. And then, of course, TT9 down here at the bottom. There's a little bit of a potential for a comeback. Obviously, they've had like close games, even though all of them have been regulation losses. But they are over a full they're they are yeah over a full game behind any other given team so uh you know they'd have to win a game and then win uh, like another game to to pass any team while these guys are still playing games but yeah obviously obviously it is still anybody's stage there's a few teams with a little bit of a a buffer i mean and clearly heroic and bds are in the best positions but third through ninth place all being within one point of each other is yeah, it's very competitive. It's been it's been a crazy kind of stage, I think, for EU thus far. We've seen a lot of overtime. Only the one on the first day, but then we saw three on the second day and three also on the on the third day with uh, I guess no no blowouts at all. I think everything has been seven this I think this was the least close game, right? Besides this, everything was seven four or closer. So yeah, crazy competitive games thus far, and you do love to see it. So okay, that's gonna do it for Europe. Let's go over to North America. All right, play days five and six for North America. First game, Parabellum versus Astralis. It goes all 15 rounds. Parabellum managed to take down Astralis. And uh, I think some people were concerned with Astral with uh, Parabellum taking Astralis to Villa because of, uh, well, because, because I guess hmm, they didn't even look that good, the thing is, versus Beast Coast. So I, w I, was, I was concerned, or I was questioning why people were, were thinking that obviously Forrest was amazing on Villa, and it's not the first time he went nuke on Villa. He did a similar kind of thing versus TSM in, I think, stage one. And uh, yeah, I mean, well, Beast Coast taking you to overtime. I don't think that makes your Villa look that good. But generally, it is a map that Villa or that Astralis quite like, quite likes. It's also a map that Parabellum quite likes. And I mean, I wouldn't see it. I wouldn't say either team looked spectacular in this. Really, the thing that put Parabellum over the line was Blaz dropping like 21 kills or something. So a very similar performance to to Forest's performance on this map against Beast Coast, but of course now it happens to Forest, and uh, yeah, hasn't been a great stage for Astralis. And I mean, as you can see over here, they lose again, and they're like eighth place or something. So it's not looking like they're going to secure that first place spot again. Uh, it might technically be possible. I guess I didn't run the numbers, but Sonics is already on 15 points. I think Astralis can only get up to 16 now. So I can't imagine that's going to be happening, but maybe somehow they'll make top four. That also doesn't seem super likely with uh, how well, <laughs> how poorly they've been playing, you'd say. Uh, TSM versus Oxygen. 7-5 victory for TSM. This was definitely the expected result, and I was anticipating a little bit of a bounce back for Oxygen. Sweater said that they were going to be switching up their roles, and, and they did switch up their roles. It's Chalet, and so, I mean, one of the more frag oriented maps it seems like something oxygen should be should be good at sweater newers uh, vertical all these guys on the on the roster that can definitely get their frags i think a map that tsm likes quite a bit too they've maybe not had the best history on it recently but uh, i mean they haven't been that good recently up until this stage stages one and two they weren't phenomenal but yeah the full three points do go to tsm but oxygen at least a more competitive game than all of their other games except for the uh, space station game that went to overtime Okay, that's the second game. Let's talk about number three, Dark Zero versus Space Station. Um, yeah, so I guess I'm 0-3 on predicting these. I, I went with Space Station. Um, and Stage 1, Dark Zero won, but I predicted Space Station. And Stage 2, uh, Space Station won when I predicted Dark Zero. I think Space Station, even though they're down in the actual record, they're up on round count. They've won one more round against Dark Zero than Dark Zero has against them because of how dominant their Stage 2 game was. But okay, yeah, Dark Zero do take him down. That puts Dark Zero in a pretty solid place, and it definitely hurts Space Station chances going forward. But uh, there is still bounce back potential. Only five play days out of nine down. So, uh, you know, we'll talk about play day six in a moment, and then there's three more even to go after that. Sonics uh, pretty well dismantled Beast Coast, and it didn't look like that was going to be the case at first. It was a 3 3 half, and then Sonics ran away with it. I think when they switched to attack, they, well, they didn't drop around. 
And uh, I think, yeah, it's just <laughs> not been great for Beast Coast. They have the one point, which they got against Astralis, but they continue to have only that one point. Xset versus Mirage. So another <laughs> another super choke by Mirage. They were up like 6-3 or something. Uh, yeah, I think that's what it was, 6-3. Maybe 6 four. It might have been 6-4, actually. But regardless, uh, Xset wins 4-5. I want to say it was 4-6. And then Xset wins four rounds in a row to secure two of the three points when Mirage certainly seemed like they should have secured the full three. So back-to-back -back chokes. I mean, this one not uh, as severe as this one, but still the same result. Only getting one point on the board isn't great. So uh, we do see them bounce back in play to number six. Talking about play to number six, we start out with, I guess, like the most dominant looking game this stage. I don't think we've seen anything. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, TSM did 7-1 Beast Coast, but... Uh, even though the scoreline was 7-2, Astralis did get a couple of rounds, it was just, it was brutal. I think Space Station gets the first round, Astralis gets the next two, and then Space Station gets six in a row. And when they switch sides, when Space Station goes on to the attack, they played they played three attack rounds. You know, they were up 4-2 and they went 7-2, they won those three rounds. They lost one guy. They, <laughs> Astralis got one kill on, on defense. And it was on bank, it's, it's not especially easy to, to defend bank, but man, I guess it's just not easy to defend against the, the onslaught that Space Station was bringing. They looked quite good and uh, maybe a little bit of an improvement for SSG. And also, yeah, Astralis seemed to have fallen off a little bit as some people did predict. And then second game, Xset take down TSM. So I don't know, maybe TSM just has a weakness to the red logos. They also lost to Astralis. Maybe that means they'll lose to uh, Paravellum when they play them. But yeah, lost to Astralis 7-4, and now they lose to Xset 7-4. So I guess a little bit of a bounce back for Xset. It felt like TSM should have won this just based on trajectories and how the teams have played the stage. I almost predicted Xset. I, I really thought this was a game that they... Had, had a good shot of winning, and they didn't up, end up winning, but of course I didn't make that prediction, so unfortunate for me. Oxygen take down Beast Coast, and yeah, it was the battle of the two teams on <laughs> one point each, and now Oxygen has four points. Very cool for them, so they get to get out of their Owen streak, but Beast Coast remains on there. I think it would have been a little bit surprising if Beast Coast won. They do have their full team now, and obviously Oxygen hasn't looked great, but if you just uh, size the two teams up on paper, Oxygen obviously looks a lot more impressive, and they they, well, they have some pretty big achievements in the past. Obviously, slightly different roster with Laxing now being replaced by Sweater, but still uh, similar kind of stuff. Newers, Newers and Dreams still pretty recent to the roster, but they've done they've done big things. They've gone to a couple of majors, did pretty well at the first major, and then uh, obviously Vertical and Fox, a two pretty legendary players. Sonics versus Parabellum, and it is a victory for Sonics. Rexon, <laughs> he got banned for, like, manually banned because his headshot rate was, like, 85% or something in ranked, and they thought that was suspicious. And I think he's been since unbanned. It was a a false ban, but uh, I guess he went he, got, he went to Hulk mode as a result of it. He dropped, like, how many kills did he drop? Like, over 20. I don't, I don't remember what the actual number was. Or at least 20. Maybe it was 20. Whatever it was. 20 and 5? I want to say it was 20 and 5. He went absolutely colossal on, on Parabellum, and this actually puts him as the, the highest rated player. Now it's him and Grix are the two highest rated players at the end of play day number six. We will look at the stats for a little bit after this. And then finally, Mirage take down Dark Zero. So they break their choke their choke spree. They get to go back to Villa where they played against Xset. I guess Dark Zero thought they had uh, their finger on the pulse in regards to how Mirage plays on Villa. And I mean, maybe they did, but Mirage just played better on the day. They they go up 6-3 and then, well, they, they win the round to close it out 7-3. So we weren't going to let Dark Zero run away with it like they did Space Station and Xset. And honestly, Mirage looked pretty good. Uh, well, I mean, letting it slip twice isn't phenomenal, but it took a lot of, it took a certain amount of metal to just get to that point, right? And they just needed to win one more round on top of the the six that they already did win in both cases and yeah they get it done this time and finally they break sky's perfect streak since returning he had uh, him and dark of course had the full nine points against against beast coast parabellum and ssg even though i guess all three of those games were were pretty close but finally they have fallen and uh, keeping things pretty competitive we'll, we'll look at the standings i guess right now since we talked about all the games what's going up here yeah sonics take the lead uh, both of them and TSM came into this week with nine points, but TSM only got three points this week. Sonics got the full six. I think they got to play Oregon twice, which they 
generally liked in the past, a little bit different squad now, but I mean, yeah, it looks like they're still pretty good on it. And then uh, TSM being trailed pretty closely by Exet, Amirage, and Dark Zero, and then even Space Station, Parabellum, and Astralis a little ways behind, but I guess not massively. Parabellum only three points behind, uh, well, third place. So we'll see. It's going to take, obviously, a little bit more work for Parabellum or Astralis to crack into the top four. It's possible, but uh, it definitely seems tricky. They're going to be needing uh, they're going to want to be preying on some downfalls and uh, well beast coast actually has been eliminated from going to the major oxygen i mean they're basically eliminated they can get up to 13 points but there's just no way you're going to the major with only 13 points um i mean i think you would need like parabellum astralis and beast coast to start doing some pretty pretty nasty work on your account but okay um who's gonna make it it's it's not totally clear sonics are almost a shoe in 15 points might not be enough but 16 points pretty much always is um, I think I think last stage the wasn't the cutoff at like 15 didn't X set and dark zero maybe both have 15 and and X set just had better uh, tie break so they so they made it through whatever the case uh, Sonic's extremely likely to go TSM I mean they, they could still get passed up now by losing to by losing to X set they put themselves in a dangerous spot not only did they you know miss out on three points but X set is another team just breathing down their necks in terms of points they are just right behind them so um, maybe it'll be Sonic's TSM except Mirage, but it's entirely possible. Yeah, Dark Zero, Space Station, maybe it'll crack in there. Maybe somebody else, but, uh, well, certainly not Oxygen or Beast Coast. Okay, yeah, that does it for this. Let's go look at the, let's just go look at the stats, I guess. All right, here are the leaderboards. I'll scroll through the full stats in a minute. Let's just take a look at this. Yeah, as I said, Rexon on top now after his insane game. I think it was 20 and 5 against Parabellum. Grixer remains up here. He's he was first place at one point and he got passed by a few players and now uh, here he is back to second place blaz has had a quite good stage at number three in terms of rating and kd snake and yeti up here as well so uh, definitely some players that were looked at with questioning eyes i suppose that uh, the the changing for tsm was um maybe not not that well anticipated i i think people had more or less faith in snake especially after seeing him play in well not only obviously challenger league but playing in saudi arabia and i think gasher was the one being questioned a little bit more gasher doing quite well as well uh a decent number of or a uh, high cost i should say i guess he's not anywhere else on here but we'll see the full stats in a moment and yeti yeah he's just looking like a whole new maybe not a new player but a revitalized player certainly coming over from sonics onto space station fifth highest rated player in the league at the moment very high kd he went crazy in the in the game versus Astralis. i think he went like 13 and 3 and uh, weirdly we see forest here on top of the entry i mean he's like basically a support player even though he doesn't uh, play that much like a support player, but on the actual ops and whatever he's playing He is in the support position a lot of times, but he still makes things happen Forrest has been so good on Astralis, but unfortunately the uh, supporting cast to him has not been showing up this stage And then Yeti, Snake, Newers, Blaz all doing pretty well in the entry department And Grixer, Melted, Geo, Gasher uh, all on top of cost 76% Snake not too far behind Multiple clutches coming out for Melted, three in fact, and then a couple, a few more players with two, and probably there's even more than this if we expanded. And Bosco, the Plant King, followed by Dream, Geo, Benji, Mula, Mohesi. They both have five, so Mirage gets a lot of plants, and for some reason they're evenly split between two players, uh, which is really weird to see. Uh, two players on the same team on the same number of plants. Uh, like tied with the highest number of plants and both being in the top five so yeah let's take a look at the full stats and i did want to see where gasher was exactly maybe he's fallen off yeah he fell off a little bit but i mean playing thermite smoke putting up these stats is still pretty respectable the cost is uh usually the the highest stat the, it's usually the most impressive stat that a support player has maybe like clutches or plants but uh, often of the like big stats over here it's it is cost and yeah in fact he is tied for the highest cost at the moment with uh, you know geo grixer whatever okay so yeah we'll just scroll through and you can just take a look at anything you wanted to take a look at of course this is on cgg until they play more games then it will be outdated but okay going all the way down the line for to <laughs> brutal brutal start one in ten and then six and nine i guess um the lowest rated player in the league and uh, if he improves then actually hyper is going to end the stage only having played two games and with uh, well just terrible stats what are you gonna do even worse than like mark the the coach of beast coast i was filling in and we actually see all five beast coast players here in in the bottom 10 which is pretty brutal but i mean it makes sense only having one point over the course of six games so yeah i guess that's gonna do it for for this video for the recap 
And so if there's anything else you want to see in the future that is not a APAC recap, I'm probably not going to do that because I just don't watch those games, don't really follow the region. But okay, if there's anything else, you know, maybe you request it. I am pretty busy these days. I'm trying to keep up with the predictions and, and these recaps, but I don't know that I can really do more, more than that if I'm being quite honest. But okay, you know, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, suggestions, corrections, uh, any of that stuff, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. A like and a subscription would also be appreciated. And with all of that being said, catch you guys in the next video.